Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackwood of Blackwood's Brew. Happy Thursday and welcome back to our series, Witch Life. This month we've been looking at the heart and today we're going to be talking about how it is worth the risk. Everything in life involves a cost-benefit analysis, including matters of heart. First, we must make our peace with the reality that everything in life is a risk. There's no way to change that and we can't effectively avoid it. And honestly, it isn't healthy for us to attempt to do so. Second, we're not Vulcans, and we can't suppress our emotions completely or even for very long. Our heart is going to be affected no matter what we do, whether we want it to or not, and being hyper-protective of ourselves actually makes us more vulnerable and weaker because we're not teaching ourselves how to cope with life's inevitable storms. We are compromising our own resiliency. And third, we need to consider quality of life. I know there are some people who have been deeply hurt in the past, who will claim that remaining emotionally uninvolved has helped them and that it has improved their lives and they just can't justify the risk of opening up. But are they right? The old saying that no man is an island has validity. Everyone needs someone and the more isolated someone is, the more prone they are to depression and a sense of emptiness. So mere existence is not enough and to have anything more than existence is going to require emotional involvement. Uh, on the professional level, if you have career goals, especially if they're very success, very specific empire building kind of career goals, uh, your chances for accomplishing any of them are greatly diminished if your heart isn't really in the work. You won't be as committed or as disciplined or as zealous as what you would need to be to succeed if you can't bring yourself to actually care. And then relationships, you know, romantic, platonic, familial they all depend upon emotional availability and openness. It means being sincerely attached to people and it mattering to your everyday life whether or not they're there. If we don't care, they won't be either, not for long. And then spiritually, we are connected to the gods through our hearts. So if our hearts are closed off, it's much harder for us to recognize the signs when deities take an interest in us. And a lot of them are keenly interested in human beings. I mean, they're not going to chase us if we're determined to have nothing to do with them. But there are a lot of them who are saying, hey, I like you. I'd like to work with you. There's, there's something there. We have some things in common or there are things I want to teach you. The gods are awake and they're active in our world today. And we just need to allow ourselves to be able to hear them. So clearly there are some practical and some pragmatic reasons to allow ourselves to feel and to be open hearted. But there are other non-tangible benefits to consider. Uh, first, true healing. Emotional wounds heal in consequence of having an active heart that still loves life and what it has to offer. Keeping the heart still and actually keeps the wounds open. They can't even scab over. And so being emotionally closed off is actually a form of self-sabotage. Uh, if we allow ourselves to, to heal, we will have improved energy flow. Now, as practitioners of the craft, we know just how hindered our magic can be if there's something that's out of sorts with ourselves. It could be unbalanced chakras or clogged up meridians or a bruised aura. A suppressed heart will cause problems in our energetic bodies, and that will limit our capabilities. Also, we have to think about wholeness. The heart is just as vital to us as the mind, our intuition, and our bodies. Why should we accept being less than our full selves? Life can be challenging enough without being in a diminished state. And part of the great work of the craft is about becoming a fully integrated human being who's whole and complete. So there are spiritual advantages to uh, taking that risk to restore our hearts to their proper place. So that's uh, food for thought. And that's the last uh, we'll be hearing about the heart for uh, the month of February. Uh, in March, we will be moving on to another aspect of of the witch life. So I hope you will be back for that. In the meantime, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. You can come see me at Blackbirds Brew on Discord. There's a link to join in the description box below. Or you can leave a comment here. And of course, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.